easiest way to kind of look at this is this little picture right here to just kind of get a contrast here. Convection is the energy of a fluid. See how we have a fire right here, and the convection is the heat coming off the fire at the beginning. Conduction, you can see the guy with the metal rod. He's got a big glove on because he wants to burn his hand. A little fire poker he's got in there. And radiation when you're standing on a distance. And these are uh, curved, of course, because um, it's sending out as waves. And uh, most likely this is heat, so this is infrared um, energy or uh, waves. Okay? So couple more things about this whole idea. There's something called a conductor and an insulator. A conductor is a material through which heat can be easily transferred. Turns out solids are the best conductors. Uh, yeah, Liquids are second and gases are the worst conductors. And then there's something called, in, uh, yeah, conductors would be like uh, these pots and pans. They're made of a metal and they conduct electricity really, really well. Or not electricity, well they, uh, that too. They conduct electricity but they can also conduct heat heat, which was our primary focus. And an insulator is a material through which heat cannot be easily transferred. And the classic example is like a, a coffee cup. The coffee cup here filled with coffee, I'll put some coffee in it, um, it's, uh, and it's steaming, right? But you can touch this because the heat does not transfer very well through the cup, so it's called an insulator. There are two main types of energy, so kind of a new um, sort of chapter in this particular podcast. There is kinetic energy, which we've already talked about, but we had a new one to talk about. That's called the energy of motion, something that's moving. And potential energy is energy that's stored. Okay? We can have lots of energy stored in different places. Okay? So if I have a, um, a ball and it's on a cliff, all right, that's stored energy. If it falls down, so this is uh, potential energy, or PE, if it falls down, when it's uh, landing down here, then that's going to be kinetic energy. So hopefully, you know, there's someone down here. Ah! I hit him on the head, I guess. It's going to hurt. All right. But there's also forms of energy. Don't get this confused with the types of energy. There is mechanical energy, which is the sum of the potential and the kinetic energy. There's chemical energy, energy stored in the chemical bonds of a substance. I'll kind of allude to this in a little bit. There's heat energy from the molecular motion of particles, that vibrational energy that we talked about earlier. There's gravitational energy, energy associated with, uh, with gravity. Oops. Basically, uh, uh, position. We would actually say position in relation to um, a substance. And then there's electrical energy, which is energy associated with the moving electrons in a substance. So there's different forms of energy. Okay, now we're talking about energy, and I'll come back to that, for, that forms of energy in a little bit. So this is a long podcast. Um, we want to talk about work and force, work. Now, work has a very specific definition to a scientist, okay? When you work, it is the product of the force exerted on a body and the distance it travels. Or another, another thing is the change in the mechanical energy of an object. Basically, work is equal to the force times the distance. You take the force times the distance, and you win well, a force, what's a force? It's a push or a pull of a body of matter. This is me force is measured in something called a newton, abbreviated in N, and the distance down here is always going to be measured in meters. So at work is a newton meter, uh, which is also a joule. Okay? We learned about joules a little bit earlier. Now, power is something different. The rate at which work is done. Now, when we say rate, rate always has, to, has some kind of a time component in there, right? So it's basically just the energy divided by the time. Or here's the equation. Power is the work divided by time. Work, of course, is a measure of energy. So it's joules divided by seconds. Um, I have a picture of Lance Armstrong down here, who uh, is a famous cyclist. And uh, he is um, exerting, he is doing a lot of work but what makes him a better cyclist than others is he can do the same amount of work that they can in a lesser period of time. So he has more power than somebody else. In fact, kind of a trend in cyclists' training is that they um, try to have more uh, power. They, they train with these, they call power meters. They see if they can uh, have uh, more power, which means you're basically traveling faster. Now, the units we use to measure power are watts which is a capital, I, a capital W, particularly electrical devices. So you have a 100-watt light bulb or a 60-watt light bulb. Those, uh, um, or even my microwave is rated at so many watts, etc. Um, also, another unit is called a horsepower, many other devices. So if you're looking at the power of an automobile, they'll say it has so many horsepowers. Okay. Now, 
I want to talk about those energy types, mechanical and chemical and that stuff. But before we do that, um, I want to talk about something called uh, transformations. We're going to talk about how we can change one form of energy into another. Okay. But one of the key players whenever we have an energy transformation is something called friction. Now, you know what friction is, I'm sure. The force exerted by a body of matter when it slides past another body of matter. So if I take my hands and rub them together, my hands warm up and there's friction. So whenever we have uh, two objects that slide past each other, all right, then that creates friction. And that friction is one reason why nothing is 100% efficient. And I'm going to talk about this word efficient in a more specific um, definition in just a minute here. So let's just talk about the story of an automobile. Here's a Ferrari. Okay. Now how does a Ferrari move and where does the energy go? First of all, the energy starts at, in uh, a gas tank, right, as gasoline. And that gasoline is chemical potential energy, because it's a chemical, gasoline. So it starts out as chemical potential energy. That gasoline then gets uh, placed from the gas tank, say the gas tank's here, goes into the engine, all right, and then that energy goes into a chamber, and then they explode the gasoline, they burn the gasoline. So it's converted, all right, into an explosion. Now you know what an explosion is. An explosion gets things hot, doesn't it? So the energy actually goes into two places. The first part of the energy moves when it explodes. It moves a piston. If you don't know how a car works, maybe I should briefly talk about it. it there's a piston and there's probably 10 pistons. This is probably a 10 cylinder car. I don't know. You get car people right notes better than I do. And that piston, when the, when the gas gets in there, the gasoline, and it explodes, it pushes this piston up. And the piston goes up and down and up and down after each exp explosion. So it turns into um, heat energy, all right, which we talked about just because it gets hot, but also it turns into mechanical energy. All right, so we're converting it from chemical potential energy into both heat and mechanical energy. The problem is that the heat is not what you want. You want mechanical energy because the mechanical energy can then be converted into the kinetic energy that moves the car down the road. But you're losing a lot of the energy as heat. In fact, there's something called a radiator. Your radiators are always in the front of your car. You, uh, always, I think I'm always, always. And that radiator cools off your engine because your car produces so much heat. All right. There's also that mechanical energy. Some of that energy is lost because even in the wheels there is friction. So some of the energy um, goes um, off to friction, which is really a form of heat energy. And so there's lots of energy lost, okay? Um, and ultimately, you want to get this energy that, that actually causes your car to move down the road, all right? And that energy is, um, a lot of energy is lost. That leads to us to a very specific definition of something called efficiency. Everybody say efficiency. Efficiency. Efficiency, no system ever converts one form of energy, 100%, into useful energy. In the case of the car, that is the energy that causes it to just drive down the road. All right. So there's an equation. The percent efficiency is the useful energy or work out divided by the energy or work in times 100. It's a really pretty simple equation. In out, work out, divided by work in times 100. Okay, so let's do an example. So we have Lance Armstrong expends 2,000 calories in a race from food. So that's chemical potential energy. The kinetic energy was 1,500 calories. So he used, um, you measured how much energy while he was doing this race, and um, it was 1,500 calories. So you essentially would take 1,500 calories divided by 2,000 calories times 100. So that's, uh, what was that, 15, uh, that's 3 over 4, right? So that's 75%. Uh, I didn't put that in the calculator, but you probably could. So he'd be 75% efficient. I'm not sure that's an appropriate efficiency for a cyclist. Seems kind of high to me, actually. Okay, just to give you kind of an idea, efficiencies of various things. Turns out hydropower, hydroelectric power, is 80% efficient. One of the most efficient things that um, we ever can have. 80% is a huge number. Wind power is between 40 and 50. I guess they can get upwards to 60% on occasion, but that's about it. In an automobile, remember the car we just talked about? It's only 22% efficient. So that means that if I have a gallon of gasoline, only 22% of that 
gallon, 0.22 gallons, goes to moving the car forward. So it's a very small percentage because most of it is lost as heat. Heat is kind of the big thing. Sometimes you want heat, right? Um, so sometimes, you know, to heat your house, um, you want that energy um, to heat your house. So, um, but sometimes uh, heat is the unintended consequence that you don't want. So that ends our podcast for today. And it's a long one, a lot of, a lot of content. Um, we're going to move now into talking more about the different kinds of u- and uses of energy in our society. Well, have a good day. We'll see you in class. Goodbye.